Today I'm going to show you how to create a BuildFire weather plugin using nothing but jQuery. Before we get started, make sure that you've downloaded the BuildFire SDK and got your development environment set up. If you haven't done so, click on the link on the video or the link listed below uh, to go see how you can do that. Okay, let's get started. So, uh, once you have your SDK downloaded and your environment set up, you should be able to see a folder structure similar to this. Plugins is where all your plugin development occurs. If you open it up, you'll see there are a bunch of examples in there that change periodically. And there's a My Plugin that is just set up blank uh, there for you to uh, set up your standard Hello World. Uh, I will put all my code that I have in here. Let's get familiar with the plugin structure. Every plugin structure is exactly the same. You have control, resources, widget, and plugin.json. Control is everything that you see on the web version that's set up for design, settings, content, things of that nature. Things basically that you see on this side of BuildFire. The widget is basically everything within the app that you'll see. Resources is just a folder used to identify your plugin through um, a thumbnail, icons, things like, like that. Uh, one caveat here is make sure you don't put any uh, of your dependencies in here. The uh, last piece is the plugin.json, which basically gives us some metadata in JSON format about your plugin. So let's start off just going through what we see here. I'll start off with the content side. So if I open up the control, you'll see content, design, and setting. That's within content. We'll go through designs and settings later. And all I see here is index.html. Within this folder, you can put all the resources that you need. JavaScript, CSS, images, other HTML files, whatever is needed. But in this case, it's extremely simple. So let's go, go in and take a look at it. So, uh, one thing that is a must with all plugins and all HTML files within your plugins is that it must reference buildfire.js. That's pretty much the only requirement needed uh, when developing a plugin. Uh, now what this does is it brings in um, all the framework that allows you to communicate with the outside environment, whether it's um, the actual device itself or the core services on the web version. It also imports automatically for you Bootstrap. So as you notice, everything is already Bootstrap styled uh, within this without me actually including Bootstrap. Boot, Buildfire.js does that for me. Now, what we're looking at right here is just this section right here. Everything underneath content, not even content, just underneath content. And you'll see that I have location and it's just basically a label and input box. There's a label in the input box and then a button to save. Right now, does nothing. If I click on it, does nothing. If I type in here, does nothing. Now let's take a look at the widget side. Now I've gone ahead and put in some code to pull from a third party open weather API. And basically what I've done here is added in my buildfire.js, which is again, mandatory. Added in jQuery and put in some HTML that basically defines this jumbotron here, puts in some elements that I can swap out later, um, and some panels here so that I can show you the degrees, the high low for the day, and if it's cloudy or clear skies. And basically, and so that's, that's this section right here. Then the code executes. Now this is jQuery. Anybody familiar with jQuery, the syntax should be clear to you. This is to illustrate that also you can communicate with outside APIs, not just uh, ones provided to you within BuildFire. So I'm just doing a simple AJAX call to this open API, uh, openweathermap.org, thank you for your API. And basically we're just going out and retrieving the data that is needed here. Once the data has come, uh, come back, we just use jQuery to populate uh, the name of the location, the description, the degrees, and if it's cloudy or not. So I spared you having to watch me code this in, but I'll go over the code with you very briefly. So the first thing we did was we went over to control content index.html, which holds this code. And basically all we did is said on click call the say function 
and our save function uh, basically called buildfire.datastore.save. Now, buildfire is a singleton that automatically gets uh, created when you import buildfire.js, which is obviously your local buildfire.js file here. <clears throat> and datastore is a service that buildfire provides to allow you to save to our secure uh, data store on our servers that um, you can then use for uh, saving plugin data and publishing plugin data. So all we did here was said build fire, data store, and save, and gave it the object we wanted to save. This is a very simple object. It just has one property called loc for location, and takes the value of location, which is whatever was written in here, and then saves it. Uh, the, this callback function uh, just allows you to know if the save went through uh, correctly or not. So if there's an error, log the error. If it's saved, just log save. Now the other function that we created is we created a function called load. And basically what that does is when you first load the page, make sure that you go and see if there's any previously saved value and preload it in here. Uh, so this is the load function and it's called immediately on startup. So because we've tried this before, we previously saved San Diego, California. But if we change this to Irvine, California and hit save, it's saved, and if I refresh, Irvine, California is here. Okay, the next step we want to do is actually take this uh, value and make sure it's loaded here. One thing you want to keep note of is that the control allows you to read and write from the data store, where the app only allows you to read from the data store. Okay, so let's move over to the widget side and see how we got uh, San Diego. When I hit save here and I refresh this to pull up San Diego, how did we tie the two? Now, remember on the content side for the load, we used buildfire.datastore.get. On the widget side, we do the same thing, buildfire.datastore.get exactly in the same method it, it knows how what data to pull now if it found an object it'll go ahead and call load weather data and pass it along the object's data's location and that just this is the same code that i showed you before wrapped in a function where now you pass it in the city and the city's added into the query string here so you can pull that data in. so one last thing we need to tie in here is if you notice when I type in here um, a new value and hit save, I have to refresh the page before the app uh, side, the widget side, uh, actually reflects what was typed in. So to tie that in as I save for this to automatically get notified that there was a change made, all we have to do is come down here and then add in buildfire.datastore.onUpdate. OnUpdate is a handler that allows you to handle the event of uh, the control side updating the value and now telling you here is the new object uh, that you've received. So uh, here you receive the object again, you call the same load weather data and pass it the new value here. So now if I come in here and type in uh, London and hit save, automatically you see a change without me having to refresh. If I come back here and I type in Irvine and hit save, automatically it shows. So as you can see here, uh, the BuildFire.js framework takes care of a lot of the tedious work of storing and retrieving your data um, from the server-side code to handling it uh, and so forth. Uh, you should be able to make your uh, plugins extremely responsive. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll leave all this code on GitHub. Uh, find the link below. And if you have any questions, please put it in the comment or send us uh, uh, an email at dev support at buildfire.com.